Hello, this Chem 1A lesson deals specifically with chemical reactions involving redox chemistry. So our learning objectives are to be able to determine whether a compound is oxidized or reduced in the process of a reaction, and to be able to recognize a redox reaction from a balanced chemical equation. So as a reminder, redox stands for oxidation reduction. And redox reactions are those chemical reactions in which we either see a substance reacting with elemental oxygen, which is where redox gets its name, or simply a elemental metal reacting with a non-metal. In a general sense, redox reactions are those in which one substance transfers electrons to another. And so like we see in the diagram below, when an electron is lost, as in when a metal reacts with a non-metal, the metal is losing electrons, so we say that metal is oxidized. On the other hand, the non-metal would be gaining an electron from that metal, and so it is reduced. So in this way, redox reactions are a paired event in which one atom gains electrons, whereas another atom loses electrons. To illustrate this concept, I'll be going through a couple of examples with you. And so our goal is to look at these balanced chemical reactions and identify within them which element is being oxidized and which is being reduced. Our first example is a fairly straightforward one in which we have two diatomic elements combining to form an ionic compound. Recall that when atoms are in their elemental state, they have an oxidation state of zero. However, when we're forming ionic compounds, the oxidation state of the atoms becomes equal to the charge. So when we combine hydrogen with iodine, it gives us hydroiodic acid. And in hydroiodic acid, we have hydrogen as a one plus cation and iodide as our one minus anion. This means that the Hydrogen is going from an oxidation state of zero to positive one. Whereas our iodine is going from an oxidation state of zero to negative one. And so now that we have assigned the oxidation states, we can apply the terms oxidized and reduced. Now recalling our mnemonic of oil rig, Oxidation is losing, reduction is gaining. So which element is losing electrons? It is the hydrogen because it's going from a zero net charge or oxidation state to a positive one. So hydrogen is oxidized while the iodine is going from an oxidation state of zero to negative one, meaning it's gaining electro electrons, and so iodine is reduced. Let's look at our second example. Here we see a more complex chemical reaction, but there is one thing that makes it a dead giveaway as a redox reaction. And that is that one of our reactants is starting as an elemental metal. And when you see it in the products, it's combined in an ionic compound. So this means that the sodium is going from having an oxidation state of zero as an element, and then ending up with the oxidation state of positive one when it becomes the sodium cation. So we can definitely identify that sodium is becoming oxidized because it's losing electrons. Another good hint is that we're seeing hydrogen as a pure element, as a product. We also see hydrogen in the hydroxide, so it becomes a little more complicated, but we do know that the hydrogen that we see as H2 gas does have an oxidation state of zero. We can then apply the rules 
for finding the oxidation state in compounds containing nonmetals, which is where we see our hydrogen in the reactants. Recall when we have combinations of nonmetals, we begin with the simple rules, first being that oxygen always has an oxidation state of minus two. So if where oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two, then our hydrogen atoms have to have an oxidation state that combines to cancel out that negative two, since water as a molecular species would have an oxidation state of zero. So if the oxygen is giving us an oxidation state of negative two, then our two hydrogen atoms are each having an oxidation state of positive one. So in this reaction, we're seeing some of the hydrogen atoms going from having a positive one to zero. That means they have to gain an electron, and so we can say that the hydrogen is reduced. So here we have our third example. This example is a classic redox reaction that is better known as a combustion reaction. So we think about combustion, we think of burning things. So what we're looking at here is the equation that describes burning propane gas. So propane has the molecular formula of C3H8. And when we burn propane, it consumes the oxygen from our atmosphere and it gives us the products of carbon dioxide and water. So one way that you can recognize a reaction as being a redox reaction is if you ever see one of these carbon hydrogen compounds, called alkanes, by the way, if we see one of these compounds being combined with pure oxygen and giving us carbon dioxide and water. The trickier bit is looking at which of the elements is oxidized and which is reduced. One giveaway is to focus in on anything in the reaction that is in its elemental state. So in this reaction, we see oxygen in its elemental state on the reactant side. So we can go ahead and assign that oxygen an oxidation state of zero. Looking over at the product side, oxygen appears in two different compounds. However, we know that when oxygen combines with other elements, it always has an oxidation state of negative two. So whether we're talking about the oxygen that's found in carbon dioxide or the oxygen that's found in water, that oxygen is going from a elemental state to a O2 minus state. So that means that we're going from a uh, neutral to gaining electrons. And so our oxygen is gaining, so oxygen is reduced. So if the oxygen is reduced, that means it has to take its electrons from someone or some element. So what is actually being oxidized by reacting with our oxygen? Well, to answer that, we really have two options. Oxygen is being combined with carbon and with hydrogen. So let's look at the oxidation state of the carbon and hydrogen atoms within propane. Again, one of our oxidation state rules is that hydrogen will have a minus one oxidation state when combined with metals or a plus one oxidation state when combined with nonmetals. Since carbon is a non-metal, our hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. That means that it is combining with the carbons, and the carbons must have oxidation states that are negative. It's a little bit complex in the math. We don't need to go through that, but we can definitely say that the carbon here has an oxidation state that is negative. Looking over at the product side, the hydrogen in the water is combined with oxygen, and we know that the oxygen has a minus two oxidation state, 
combining with two hydrogens, that means that each of the hydrogens must have a plus one oxidation state. So the hydrogen has not changed. Now we can look more carefully at the carbon. The carbon in CO2 is being combined with oxygen, two oxygens in fact. So if we double up that oxygen, we have an oxidation state of negative four coming from the oxygen in carbon dioxide. Because CO2 is a molecular species with no charge, we know that the carbon has to balance out this um, negative value. And so our carbon has an oxidation state of positive four, so that negative four and positive four cancel out to zero. So our carbon has gone from some value that is negative to some value that is positive, meaning the carbon must have lost electrons, and so the carbon is oxidized. So you can watch this video a couple times, go through this example at your own pace until you fully understand how I arrive at all of these conclusions. Once you've done that, we're going to apply our learning to this practice problem. So here I've listed five balanced chemical reactions, and I'd like you to identify which of the five is not the redox reaction. For a little extra practice, those which are redox reactions, you can look at carefully and see if you can assign which is the oxidized element and which is the reduced element. Good luck and I'll see you again soon.